call it a scary story, call it sharing information, or call it citizen journalism in some form, that confessions of a gang stalker story and targeted individual girlfriend story has prompted many to tell their own stories. These often have the same elements. It just goes down in a different way, a different place. The script is similar, but the actors have different names. In this one, the charming, perfect girl goes further than trickery to destroy her target. She tries to take the ultimate thing from him, his life. But her plot failed, and she was exposed. So stay tuned for this gruesome affair. Finding yourself in the talons of an owl in the shadows of the forest moonlight. It's a gruesome affair. (laughs) Buckle up. This one has it all, and it's all true. If anything, it's watered down. When you talk about the spiritual battle happening here in Earthrealm and running into well-connected, satanic, cult, mafia families, well, the story is going to be insane even if you get just 10% of the hell that it is. Still, the lessons learned are worth the scars. One simply couldn't make the truth up. The truth is simply unbelievable. There's some things you just don't say, but people kind of know. They hope it isn't true, even though it is. We love to gaslight ourselves. This story is one I want to keep my distance from because the people involved are murderers and their ties cross lines into government, police, organized crime, ritual sacrifice, and highly profitable international cartel businesses. On the front, It's all legitimate organizations, but behind some layered veils lays the occult, satanic influences, and unreal thirst for power and cult bloodlines. The spiritual other world is very real. Just talking about parts of it is dangerous, but it's even more dangerous to not talk about it. Remember what we are told. Be wise as serpents and kind as doves. In this world, if you are a sheep, that's what you are. Nobody wants to be a sheep because sheep get taken advantage of unless in rare instances they have a shepherd that truly loves them. You want to be a wolf in this world. As for us wolves, it's a personal choice whether to be a good wolf or a bad wolf. I want to remind that wolves are very loyal to their own pack and very loyal to their mate. It's good to be a wolf, and it's good to be in a wolf pack. This is a love story that involves witchcraft, love spells, love bombs, and ultimately lies, deceit, betrayal, curses, ritual sacrifice, and cold-blooded murder. I will tell this story from the first-person perspective, but it did not happen to me. It happened to someone else someone who listens to the Smoking Owl Tales YouTube channel and wants to share the truth for those with ears to listen. In fact, this story is happening again and again. The names and places change, but the story stays the same. You might just recognize this story's pattern from something you've seen in your life, your story. This story is not connected to yours even though it actually is, we're all connected. This story takes place in two cities primarily. I will refer to these cities as Oz and Emerald City, which obviously are not their names. The part of the story that happens here is mostly in Oz. It's amazing how small the big world is when you start naming events and places. I want to stay 10 feet from this story and the dark forces involved. So officially, this story is just some fiction that I made up. Your discernment will have an idea if that is the fact. There is truth in fiction and fiction in truth. With this one, there is wisdom in entertainment or maybe entertainment and truth. That's enough on that. This experience blew open the door of spirituality in my life, even though I've had certain gifts the entire time. Now, 
I know why I was targeted. Here's how it went down. I was living in Oz City. I got out of the gang world and had cleaned up my life. My name is George, but people call me G. That is definitely not my real name. I had gotten involved with some bad stuff, bad people, bad stuff if you know what I mean. I thought about it all and realized where the road I was on would lead to. I didn't want to arrive at that place. I managed to get out of the gang world, drug free, and had started my own business. I was over two years clean when my business started to take off. I had to hire workers for all the contracts coming in. This is a few years back, 2018. I don't want to get into specifics, but I had a few employees and the numbers were getting really good. We were doing installations on commercial properties. I had achieved the financial success that I thought was impossible. I made it, mostly. I lacked the love that I wanted. I thought I'd really be happy if I had a woman in my life to live in this success with, with Tinder, Hinge, Insta, and OnlyFans. Dating is crazy now. Did you know that OnlyFans has over 3 million content creators at the start of 2023? I'm not sure this is a plus for humanity. I wanted to find a woman that had her virtue intact to build something good with, something wholesome together. As part of cleaning up my life, I had started to be a regular at a local church in Oz City. The people were friendly and I looked forward to going to and being a part of the community on Sunday mornings. One time after the service, they offered prayer services. I asked to have a prayer spoken over me. An older and kind gentleman put one hand on my shoulder and the other on my heart and prayed and said that like in Psalm 23, I will drink from the good water. He said that I had the glow and he could see it. I felt amazing that morning and that is when I noticed her looking at me. She looked away in an awkward moment when I caught her just staring at me. It was like she was waiting to get her turn to talk to me. She wasn't exactly my type, but almost exactly. She had an energy and enthusiasm about her and she just seemed to single me out in that big room with all those people. Hi, my name is Maria, she said. I just love the music they sang here this morning. She said, yeah. I said, I'm a traditional guy and usually like to start the talking with a girl, but I guess people are just so open and friendly in this setting. There is a level of trust. I mean, the bad girls who go clubbing on weekends and indulging in the worship of their ephemeral beauty are probably home asleep with hangovers while this one is bright-eyed and fresh for church at 10.30 on a Sunday morning. There's a cafe as part of the building the church is in. Want to try a chocolate croissant? They gave them free to new attendees. Is this your first time here? I asked. No, she said. I try to be here every Sunday. Funny, I had been coming here for about four months and not seen her once. The chocolate croissants won't be free for us, but let's grab a couple. She said, we did, and they were good. Maria was amazing. She was a young, beautiful woman who could have any man she chose, and she just seemed to stare at me with puppy eyes. She was a musician, as I am. This was a wonderful day, but something was off. She didn't seem to know anyone there except me. But I wanted to enjoy her company and not be weird or paranoid. We started dating. I wanted to move slow, but Maria seemed to want to rush things. I've had my streak of crazy relationships, so I like to get to know who I am getting involved with. My most toxic one would later pale in comparison to what was flowing down the river and into my life. If I had any idea who Maria was, I would have ran as fast as I could. For my safety, for my life, 
and for my sanity. It's the perfect story, meeting a beautiful and brilliant woman at a church service on a sunny Sunday morning. Maria claimed to have only dated a couple other men in her life, but she seemed to really know what she was doing when we were together. I asked her once how she could be so satisfying and know what she was doing in between the sheets, and she wrote it off and said, it's not that complicated. Now, I know she had targeted me. Why? Because she could see my glow. When you got the glow, Satan comes, or more likely he sends his minions to try to derail you. She saw that glow, which I didn't understand at that time, but I do now. The glow. You dear listener might just know what I'm talking about. You probably have it too, or know what it is. This all turned out to be a big wake-up call. But before I ever met Maria, I had always been different. I know now that my family line carries a curse. Most are aware of it, but we don't talk about it. It's one of those things that you hope will go away if you just don't talk about it long enough. But things go the other direction. Holding back this secret while misunderstanding it just makes it like a volcanic eruption when the top finally blows the lid. The spiritual attack in the form of Maria was the passcode for blowing the lid off this volcano. I know now that I have the glow. Some call it chosen. The being different that cursed me is actually a gift. I am a playable character in this Earth Realm game. And the gang stalkers, NPCs, trucker hitchhikers are all here to derail my mission. I was born during a leap year, and it was strange because, aside from my own mother, two other women in my family had their babies that year. It's like they were trying to have babies that year. I know now that this was indeed the fact. I don't want to say the year because that will reveal a personal data point about who I am but it really was a leap year. This has significance. You see, I can see the spirit world. Everybody can to a degree, but so many don't understand their own powers. The dark forces above don't want the masses to understand their spiritual power. Keeping the masses in the dark helps maintain control. Some will wake up during their lifetime Others will not. Some awakened ones pretend they don't see it. There are sheep, wolves in sheep's clothes, and then there are those like me, just wolves. The others in my family can see with their eyes too, but they hate me for my glow. I had several near-death experiences in my life. Looking back, my own family was trying to off me, but I just wouldn't die. Bad stuff happened, but I just kept on keeping on and glowing. This is why Maria targeted me. She wanted that light for herself. It's not love. It's more like stealing. She doesn't have the light, so taking mine is like survival for her. She's like a dark void that feeds on life energy, a real vampire. She is a witch from a long line of witches and warlocks. They wanted my life energy. They say the devil wants your soul. This is so true, but he wants so much more than just your soul. The devil wants your whole bloodline. About my near-death experiences, I was poisoned as a child. A television fell on me from above. I was injected with something. None of it worked. I just wouldn't die. I could see it, but somehow none of it worked on me. There are things that can't be explained with logic. They always treated me lesser. My mother left my dad when I was 10. Not sure what that was all about. There were demonic spirits all around. I could sense it. Some things just happened and were not explained. Things happened 
that I will describe as blasphemy against God and leave it at that. Growing up, I was surrounded by family members and people who had sold their souls for power, gifts, and wealth. The theme was spiritual loss for material gain. The deal always sounded good on the surface, but it's like nobody reads the fine print. In the end, it's a bad deal. A very, very bad deal. Everybody, each and every single one of them, will later regret the bad choice they made. It's that simple. I'm going to say that one more time. Everybody later regrets the very bad choice. Some call it narcissism. Others just say demonic and spiritual possession. As a child, I would dream of the spirit realm, and it made sense to me. It just did. I tried to hide the fact that I knew these things, but I was the black sheep. I would be the scapegoat for the others. I just wanted to belong to something good. That's why I got involved in some stuff in my teens. I wanted to be part of something. That's the thing about gangs. It really feels like a good community at first. The pride and power feels amazing when you've never felt that before. I was surrounded by narcissists. They call some covert narcissists because when the mask drops, it's just shocking to see how evil they are. Some are good at hiding it, but like the saying goes, there are three things you cannot hide for long. The moon, the sun, and the truth. I have a good temperament. After I cleaned up my life and got focused, success just came steadily to me. Once the distractions were gone, good things just started to happen. I didn't want to be like my older brother and cousin. I wanted to stay out of gang life. I wanted to have an honest business, pay my taxes, and sleep at night knowing nobody has anything on me. It took some hustle, but it really actually happened. It's not easy to make a plan and maintain the discipline to make it actually happen. The other path would lead to life in prison, or worse. This path will lead to, well, it led to wealth and wholesome independence. This is what I wanted. This was my dream, and it came true, almost. When Maria came into my life, it felt like, this is it. God is sending me a good woman to compliment my success. But as people familiar with toxicity and narcissism and dark arts are too familiar with, things always seem too good to be true in the start. This was the case. It just seemed to be too good to be true. Maria was so nearly ideal in so many ways, and she seemed so attentive and focused on working towards making me happy. I thought maybe God had sent her to me, but this was balanced out with dread. I took it real slow with her. I wanted to be sure she was trying really hard. Aside from showering me with physical love that a man naturally loves, Maria used the word love quick. She said, she loves me. I love you. 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 Beautiful words, but the ultimate manipulation tool of the narcissist or a witch or a warlock. She used her spells to trap me. She cast her evil spells on me. It is natural for a man to love a beautiful young woman, a virtuous woman who loves him. But in a world where so many women, people, have fallen from grace, when a man finds such a prized woman, he is ready to give such a woman a crown of divinity and the woman gives the man his crown of divinity. We are stronger, together, united. This is the way it has to be for it to really work. 
And this is why such unity is being targeted in our world to promote dysfunction. Such a healthy tree would bear sweet fruit. And this woman, Maria, is no woman of virtue. She is an actor, a chameleon. She is a witch in disguise. And none of such witches can keep their mask on forever. A harlot of Babylon is too good to be true, and then so horrible it is unreal. I had dreams that were prophetic. One really shook me, and now it makes so much sense. That is the one of the black mantis perched on a beam of light. It must have been just a couple months after I met her that I started having this dream. The mantis represents her, and the light is my soul energy, and she is siphoning that energy from me for her own desperate survival. She casts her love spells, words have power, and she wrapped her spiritual tethers around me with her love bombs and the spells that she spoke to me and the words she spoke over me in private outside of my physical presence. I wanted to believe the sweet lies, so I tried to make things work. She told me that I'm all she ever wanted, but continued to disrespect me. Basically, she wanted to condition me to be okay with the abuse. My toxic family was no different. In the realm of witchcraft, they have what you call familiar spirits. Dear listener, I couldn't tell you how many times Maria would stare at me and I would ask, what's wrong? And her reply was, I can't read you or what you're thinking about. It's hard. Anyone who operates in witchcraft without meeting each other knows they can communicate telepathically. This is why it was not only my old gang friend, Crawler, that's what we call him, but random people I would meet where I suspected that Maria and that person knew each other. She is not the only one who has told me that she could not read me. This is the spiritual essence of gang stalking. All she ever had to do was ask me what I'm thinking. I'm not big on lying, and I don't ever wish bad on people or become jealous for no reason. I like to see people make it in life and succeed. Well, these people are the exact opposite. They are literally children of the devil. He came only to lie, to steal, to cheat, and to destroy. My body was sounding the alarm bells, but I stayed. There was a time where I was laying with her and I got up to go into the other room because I felt literally sick to my stomach. This is an effect she had on me and it would only get worse from here. It was like my body and spirit knew I was in danger, but my mind was stuck in some love spell logic loop and I wanted to believe the chameleon illusion I was bearing witness to. There were so many coincidences or synchronicities. Her last name was pretty much my name, my real name. Her birthday was the same day after mine. It's like she was put here on earth for exactly me and she was her assignment being to destroy me little by little and despite the often strange vibes i gave her the title girlfriend we were going steady i thought that maybe i was just being paranoid and she might just be my soulmate but things changed after she got the title it's like she had been working double time to earn the title once she got it, once she secured me, she started to change. She said I was being an ass. She stopped giving compliments. I was a little uneasy. At times, I started wondering exactly who it was that I have here as a girlfriend. Her stories just simply did not add up. I asked her to clear up stories that didn't add up and she would just double down on her unrealistic and obviously a lie story. This is calculated gaslighting. I don't like admitting it, but I needed to know. 
I paid for a background check on her. It was money well spent because I was shocked to find out who I was I had sleeping in my bed with me. She actually was a very wealthy person and had considerable assets internationally. This was shocking for a young woman who presents herself as sweet and inexperienced. In truth, she was born into a wealthy, satanic, mafia, cult family, and she is very, very aware of her status. Such status comes with pride, but behind that veil is dread. None of them are happy about their predicament. Maybe more than the wealth is the status of the forbidden knowledge that gives them their sense of pride and entitlement. Her act was slick, I have to admit. Without her youth and beauty, she'd be powerless. But she still has this and will for some years from now. Maria was sent to take me out. I understand this spiritual reality now. One more thing about the background check that really, really threw me off. Maria was a paid and salaried police informant. Seriously, you can't make this stuff up. Imagine finding out that the supposedly virtuous girl that is telling you she loves you is a spellcasting, salaried by the corrupt authorities, satanic cult mafia family member on assignment to destroy you and suck every last ounce of life energy out of your soul before leaving you for dead. Yeah, it ain't a pretty love story, this one. With all their power, you might think they won, but they lost. The whole gruesome affair just made me stronger and wiser, and my glow even brighter after the period of darkness and awakening, and the truth about them is exposed. This is why they must run an absurd smear campaign to try to poison the well of truth about them. That is the thing about evil. It is a parasite. The lies are cheap and laughable once you know the playbook. It's plain as day to see it once you trust your divinity, which is your natural God-given intuition. Things started getting crazy. It's half anxiety provoking and half exciting. This is how such a witch hooks you. It's the addictive nature and the thrill of the trauma bond, the Machiavellian vampire manipulation cocktail of enticement and fear. We kept going to church on Sundays during the first year. I know that having God in your life doesn't require church attendance, but I enjoyed the messages, the music, and especially the good vibes from the community. Through all that, I felt like I was catching myself on my path to personal heaven. I was happy to have Maria by my side. One Sunday, she whispered to me during church service, I'm not wearing any panties. I mean, I'm a man and that is hot, but why would you do that in church? It left a bitter taste and I knew she was poisoning. But you know when the poison is sweet, sometimes you just make a bad decision. I noticed things were disappearing from my home. The razor, my toothbrush, things that I wear were disappearing. She was pocketing my stuff for her dark magic witch rituals. It sounds crazy, but I know. This is the situation. Some of my friends started acting strange around me. I knew something was up. Things were going down and people were not telling me. I was getting spoonfuls of lies from the people closest to me in my life. I came home one night from work and Maria told me she had a surprise for me. We had been working on a contract that was very lucrative and I wanted our customer to have the best service money could buy. I take pride in my work and my business, so I come home feeling the reward of a hard, honest work day, and Maria pulls a pipe out of her bag. I don't want to say what it was, because I'm very ashamed. It was not weed or hash, if that's what you're thinking. I have been clean for almost three years. The business was taking off, and the money was rolling in, 
all legit and taxes filed and paid. I have a beautiful young woman who adores me. Why would she do this? I was strong enough to say no, but it really threw me off that she would do this. This is how the devil works. He tempts you. He says, it's okay, you deserve it. He says, everybody cool does it. It's just once, it's no big deal. And then after you do it, he ridicules you for it. Since I cleaned up and got out of gang life, my relationship with God has become so good. When I look at those crystals, I know that it is pure, distilled poison. Why would Maria do this? The girl I met in church. I just got sick to my stomach and kept thinking of her face trying to tempt me. She is slowly trying to get me to destroy myself. Later that night, she got all mad and said that she didn't feel loved. If it's not one thing, it's another. But she wanted me to be off my square. We didn't sleep well. Maria woke up that night with nightmares. Yep, 3 a.m. I couldn't sleep with that stuff in the house. So I got up in the middle of the night. I fished it out of her bag and left the house. There's a sewer down at the corner. So I walked down there on the street in the cool darkness of a silent Oz city. As I approached it, a police car was rolling slow with the lights off and turning the corner. Am I set up? Did she bake me a cake? Meaning set me up for this? Carrying drugs and a pipe. My story is not going to hold water. I should have had a dog to make this walk look legit, but who walks a dog at 3 a.m.? I could feel my heart banging. I held my head up with my poker face and tried to stay cool. The officer gave me eyes as he rolled by. Seriously, what the fuck? He rolled on and didn't disturb me. I just wanted to be asleep, but I'm walking around like a junkie in the middle of the night, even with drugs on me, and I want no part of this. The coast was clear, and I had second thoughts now. Maybe that cop would come back and look in the sewer. I headed home and put that crap back in her bag. No sleep. That's the thing. The Jezebels do this. They get in your life and play tricks to get you sleep deprived, just like cults do to their members, or the police and military do to get a confession, even if the person is innocent. Sleep deprivation makes you crazy, and this is how they want you. It's hard to stay on your square when you haven't had any sleep, and this is exactly where they want you. They want the control, and they want you to look like the crazy one. That's why it is the ultimate rebellion to be well-rested, polite, and walk on the line of truth and dignity. Calm, cool, and collected. This is how you have to be, and they hate it when you walk the line. Life went on like that. I've learned so much, and I'm trying to tell you what I learned. Many men have been brought to their knees by love spells. Women too. It can go both ways. Witches know how to use it. They lack empathy and are psychopathic, narcissistic, or sociopathic. A witch or a warlock will likely use such an easy spell without limits. The limit being the intuition of the target. This goes both ways. It can be a man or a woman using the dark arts of spell casting. Both do, but especially women master the craft. For some, it's just survival. Once a person taps into trusting their intuition, the love bomb loses all its power. It's that simple, but it takes spiritual strength. Once you know, you know. It just becomes what it actually is cheap and fake words, and not many of them. Maria didn't read a book about spells 
spellcasting, and witchcraft. It came naturally and intuitively to her. It comes in many ways, but part of it is channeling and possession. She has multiple altars, so her body is taken over by many demonic forces, especially from her father. This is spiritual possession. One time Maria was texting me the nastiest and most vile texts. I thought I was texting with her satanic cult member father, and I was. But the messages were being typed by Maria's fingers. This happened many times. You feel the tension. You feel the twisting feeling in your gut, the pins and needles on your skin, the tightness at your throat. Trying to make sense of the love bombs combined with the rage literally gives one a headache. This is the brain break. They are so satisfied with their work when you finally get there. Some of the gang people that I used to run with from prior to summer 2017 started showing up in my life because Maria brought them. This is when I started to feel gang stalked. I felt like I was running into bad people everywhere and they were watching me. She seemed to know them. Anyone who operates in witchcraft without meeting each other knows they can communicate telepathically. There's no way to explain it, but it goes beyond tech, cameras, apps, and communication systems. This is all lower level. The higher level communication is telepathic, or spiritual, or intuition, or whatever you want to call it. I've heard it described as simply Satan whispering into ears. You can try to understand it if you like, but do you even understand how a camera works? At some point, you just know it works, and that's all you need to know. My gang member friend, Crawler, who I've known for years, stopped by one night just to say hi to Maria and I. He was friendly, and the words were light, but it just felt off. It did not feel right. I knew there was something he was not telling me. I got a feeling that they had been together, Maria and him. This is more of a gaslighting. You get that bad gut feeling, but you know that if you ask, they'll make you seem crazy, even though you are actually spot on and correct. Add to that the fact that I know Crawler has killed for money in the past and the situation just gets even more unpleasant. Maria seemed to be in the mix and hitting up another old friend of mine. This was out of place and giving me anxiety. She was power tripping and acting like it's all friendly, but we were going steady and this was not cool. I hoped things would get better, but I kind of knew they wouldn't. I just didn't want to admit it to myself at that point. She bought a curling iron or a hair straightener from her sister. Amazing, these people have so much money but are still so cheap. Her sister was even asking for an unreasonably high price about retail. She had bought a new one in a different color. They really like to shop as a form of relief from their reality. We had to go to her parents' house one night to pick up that hair iron. We pulled up. She asked me to stay in the car. I thought it would be more cool to go in and say hi to the folks, but no. Come to think of it, I never went in their house once. She had no photos of the house too. She said that photos are not allowed of the outside of the house or the inside of the house not even if just saved on a phone privately. Some things are not as private as you'd like them to be. It's like there was something going on in there. I know they are dirty, and all forms of blasphemy against God are routine in their satanic cult mafia family, but I wouldn't be surprised if something really bad was going on in there, if they were hiding people in there. Witchcraft is deeply rooted in her family line, they do bad stuff to each other. It's a hostile environment with a thin veneer of kindness. 
carefully chosen words and false smiles. They are very secretive and start calling people crazy when they start to catch on. Remember, it's called DARVO, D-A-R-V-O, Deny, Attack, Reverse Victim Offender. It's not a fun game to play. Going steady with Maria was anything but steady. She got very jealous. Her personality would change on a dime. I was getting familiar with her alters. Alters meaning alternative personalities. The worst being the pure psychopathic rage of her father coming through her. She would slightly shapeshift when she did this. Her face contorted. I could see her lips make slight wiggles when she was constructing lies in silence. She would try to say things based on what she thought I knew. I never told her how much I knew about her. Often she was like a sweet little child and wanted to be babied. She hid her animal teddy bears. Her go-to altar was the sweet victim. As weak as it is to play the victim card, she pretty much wore that card on her forehead. She talked about her ex a lot, who was a handler. He broke her down mentally to get a spiritual stronghold on her. This was coordinated with her father. The ex had been charged with manslaughter, but I never got the full story on that. She said her ex was a cheater and a psycho, and she had been perfect. The story is always the same with these witches. I caught many of her lies, but wouldn't tell her because I knew that when her lies are exposed, she rages. It's a double bind, accept the lie as truth, or deal with the rage and the darvo. The evil devil child altar is always available to show up instantly to combat any truth. I was getting tired of the lies on top of lies on top of lies. All the sneakiness. Things never added up. This is no way to live. I knew something was off with her relationship with my old gang buddy, Crawler. So I finally confronted him. I told him, I know there's something you're not telling me with Maria. He just looked at me with blank eyes and in a moment of what was honesty, a warning, he kindly said, be careful, she does black magic. That didn't get too far, so I confronted Maria later that day. What's up with you and Crawler? He told me the truth. It was a bluff to get a reaction, but I wasn't prepared for what my ears were about to hear. She was silent and tried to collect her words. Her lizard lips did that wiggle. I could tell that she was racing through her knowledge and trying to figure out what I knew and if I'm bluffing. She wanted to optimize her response with no regard for the truth. Her knowledge being the micro expressions and hints that I had given her subconsciously or by accident. She finally said something. He hit on me. I couldn't stop him and he stole the phone. He has no regard for other people's lives. She said crying and closing her eyes. I could feel the rage taking over my body. I wanted to do something bad to her in that moment. I marched outside and started driving over to Crawler's place. Maria got in our pickup and followed. It felt like the whole world was on fire. She was trailing me and my phone was ringing. It was like the burning world was on mute. I pulled up in front of Crawler's place and walked on the concrete path to the door and knocked loud. Crawler answered. I pulled the door. I am not sure if it was open or locked. I just opened it with adrenaline, the kind that opens a door no matter what. I was seeing tunnel vision, just his disgusting face. I punched him in the face and laid him out. I felt justified. I walked away trying to catch my breath. Maria was screaming and scared. It is all a blur, but I heard her say, I think you killed him. At that moment, I didn't care, and I wasn't affected at all by those words. 
looking back now, I know I was in the wrong. This should not have happened. If you've ever dealt with a narcissist, especially a covert one, you know that when the mask slips, it is shocking to discover that the silver tongue was just a serpent's tongue of pure evil the whole time. It shakes your soul, but you join a special and elite club, those who know. I was starting to realize that my intuition is literally psychic. Yes, I am psychic, and so are you. Where there is smoke, there is fire. It is that simple. I knew that she was sleeping around. It's what she has to control men, and she likes to be in control. Such witches have so many trademarks. Some steal identities. Some have falsified marriages. Luckily, I never married Maria. That would have destroyed the one thing that is really mine. My business and financial security. I was just a mark to her. Things are not good, but I tried to make things work. The weeks were racing by. One night, a friend from way back stopped by. We call him the Riddler. Of course, his mother didn't give him that name. And of course, I changed it from what it really is for this story. He does murder for hire. It's not pleasant, but it is what it is. The vibe was weird. Maria and Riddler sure had a vibe like they knew each other. She was helping me in the kitchen. One of Riddler's friends showed up. That's Crawler. Yeah, Crawler. Crawler and Riddler were in the other room. It was a weird vibe. I hate that feeling when your gut knows that you are the odd man out. They all know something is up and they are not telling me. It's all about me nonetheless. Maria was acting weird and sketchy too. We were making Chile Verde from scratch. This is good food. Riddler and Crawler sat at the table with Maria and I. Not cozy. It was quiet. Their eyes were all on me. You guys eating? I asked. I'm not hungry. Riddler said. None of them were. Okay, it's dinner time and this vibe and nobody is hungry and staring me down with these weird faces. I'm not hungry either. I said. We cleaned up. Wasted food. Not a bite eaten. Tainted. I thought they might have tried to poison me. That's what my intuition was telling me. Riddler and Crawler were in the living room with their guns out, strapping up. No food, but guns. I noticed Riddler was sweating. Maria walked over to the front door and shut it. I saw the smirk. That was a weird thing to do and made me go into full alert and take notice to my breathing. That smirk. She can't hide it. The momentary sign of evil and evil intention and satisfaction from the deceit and evil. Why'd she do that? My gut was screaming the alarm bells. Everybody pretending to act cool. Riddler and Crawler came into the kitchen and were waving their guns around. This is not normal. They were acting like it was. This is mad sketchy and weird. Riddler dropped his gun by accident. Crawler looked at him and said, You're going to need that. Everyone got real at that moment. I was starting to see tunnel vision even worse and was finding it very difficult to breathe. Yo. I need some air and I'm going for a walk. I said. I walked to the door. I opened the closed door and stepped out. I walked away from the house. As I walked, I felt it. I got shot. Yeah, I got fucking shot. I took a bullet in my back. I got shot in front of my own house by my own guests. I kept walking. I just kept walking and didn't look back. It's like that line in Psalm 91. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I walked past that sewer that I never put drugs in. I walked further. I looked down at my chest and saw the blood and hole in my shirt. It's fucking crazy, but I got shot. The bullet went right through me. I saved the shirt still to this day. The shirt has two holes, from where the bullet entered and where the bullet exited. Aside from that, nothing. I literally took a bullet and it did nothing to me. It just went in my back and came out of the front of my chest like a paper cut. I know this is supposed to be a fiction story, but this really, really happened. This is my protection. I didn't even break my stride. They tried to poison me and my intuition knew not to eat it. They shot me and it had no effect. I knew I could not go back there. She is a witch. She is a harlot of Babylon. Her spirit is described in Revelation. The pattern is idealize, devalue, discard. Sometimes the discard comes as a text message. Other times it comes as poison. And in my case, a bullet through the chest. A witch wants you codependent on her. They have no empathy. So when they dole out the love spells, it's 100% control and 0% love. It's that simple, albeit bitter. I'm sorry, listener, if this sounds familiar, but you are strong now when you know. I laid low for a while. I went and stayed with my dad. One minute you're cooking chili verde, and the next you are getting shot for dead by your dinner guests. This is the narcissist witch trauma bond. My dad has guns and a dog. We were safe. I would venture out to work strapped and to stores to pick stuff up. A lady approached me at Walgreens one night after work. She was an older lady. She said, God loves you. He knows what you are going through. He chose you. He never left you. He never left your family. They've been trying to kill you since you were a baby. She said, How'd you know? I said, surprised. God got you through it. You passed your test. She said, I felt the warmth rise up in my back and chest. I felt the electricity on my scalp. I knew this was a message, and I received it. Thank you. I said to her back as she calmly walked away. This is when the synchronicity started for the good. I guess they always happen, but I kept running into random people with good messages. Another random lady at McDonald's reassured me that God has his hand over me. As the lady prophesied over me that I was almost killed plenty of times, God was always with me. The thing is, no matter how bad the world gets, I no longer wanted to add to the darkness anymore. The same night God gave me a dream. I've seen everything they ever tried to do, even all the rituals, and who was involved, even my aunt introducing my mother to the guy who hurt her, and they even performed a ritual to try and take God's hand over me and somehow transfer it to themselves. It's crazy. The dream was so detailed they even tried to take my gifts of discernment and to be able to see into the spirit realm. It bothered me at first because it feels like since my awakening and leaving my ex, these gifts have multiplied times ten. I was able to visit an old friend of mine from my previous gang who hadn't turned against me, and he returned my Glock 9 and told me to be safe. There are a few more chapters of receiving attacks. Who am I kidding? They will continue even after this story is posted. But I want to tell you about the last time I saw Maria. I was trying to avoid her. I knew if I saw her, she'd play sweet and loving and probably throw sex at me. 
I wasn't sure I could resist that. I had to go back to the house to grab some things. My computer, hard drives, clothes, and some other stuff. I went when I thought she'd be gone. I brought a gun. I parked on the street behind the back of the house. I went in. And she was there, like she was waiting for me. Where have you been? She said cheerfully. Maria, look, I'm just here to pick up a few things. I said. She seemed to be in a sweet altar. We small talked a little bit. Then she said, you just won't die. You know that thing when you hear someone clearly, but you can't believe what they're saying? Yeah. I asked her, what did you say? You just don't die, do you? She said very clearly. You're just going to say it out loud like that? I asked. She didn't answer and switched back to small talk. I grabbed the stuff I came here for. I carried the bags and threw the strap of a larger bag over my shoulder. Have a good night, Maria, I said, and I walked out of there again. No words or bullets behind me. I jetted out and my plan was to never see that house or that harlot of Babylon again. There's another episode of this story involving my father and the other city. They came after him. My father's time was up, so God removed him from my life. He used my enemies to do it. There's a whole story there, maybe for another time on another day. I want to say something about the archetype of these satanic cult mafia families. They are connected. They are wealthy. The wealth attracts beauty, so they have that too. But don't envy them for a moment. They made a deal with the devil. It always ends in tears. There's no exception. They took the easy choice and will never achieve the glory that the hard choice leads to. They will show pride in what they have because that is it. When their lies and deceit work on victims, they get an energy boost like a drug addict taking a hit. But in the big picture, they are just like drug addicts and their future is similar. This is why they are always distracting themselves with shopping, fun, video games, and traveling because the last thing they want to do is think about who they are and what they are. They are spiritual cancer societal parasites and while they might appear to have a glamorous lifestyle from a distance they are miserable and living in survival mode when you get close you see the paint over the rot they are like brown bananas spray painted yellow they hate the truth because those who know the truth about them cannot respect them just as they cannot respect themselves when you encounter them your internal intuition will alert you. Listen to this warning. It can save your life. It takes strength to say no to the tempting words of the devil. He will craft a promise that sounds too good to be true. He will study you to understand what you desire and what you cannot resist. And the trap is set. It's all just cheap theater. The getting is good because the getting is the real conscious godly glow that you have. This is yours and only yours. Fuck the devil. He can't have it. And he knows how cringe and pathetic his lies are. If you focus your energy, your light on your purpose, you are walking on the narrow path to your own personal heaven. The bad news is it is not easy. The good news is that it is yours, and if you put in the real and honest work, you get it. You are not alone on this sober and long mission. You have an army in the spirit realm on your team, and we are working through the hands of good people all over earth realm. You are loved, and you are needed, and if you understand these words in your heart, you are free. Watching the evil ones get exposed and collapse is going to be amazing. And watching Earthrealm turn into the Garden of Eden that it really is, is going to be amazing too. 
they are victims of being slaves to materialism and to their egos. To become an embodied sovereign individuated soul, one must transcend personal will and find the divine will of the all. This is when you are free and you just love reality and can't get enough of truth and life. This is when the simple things of life become amazing and fun. Imagine if the occult knowledge of the dark arts were learned and directed to advance our souls on the journey to more consciousness. I don't think we should just imagine it. I say we imagine it and get to work and we do it. I returned to Oz and everything was different. I no longer could go to my old hangouts. I was not only feeling out of place but rejected where I once was praised. Now I'm not here saying I'm invincible and can't be killed. But God has the power and the only one who decides who stays and who goes. I would test God by shooting myself or jumping in front of a car just to test him. Our purpose in life is to help people because they lost their way. I wanted revenge and to return to the other city, which I called Emerald City in this story, and really give the people hell. But these people are lost and under the influence of bad spirits, even Maria. She never had a chance as a child. God showed me the things that she went through, and he showed me this because he wanted me to not hate her and to remind me I'm no one to judge. He loves all his creations. He just hates the sin, so he is coming back to intervene. History repeats itself. We were created to worship something. Even atheists worship money or some idol. The love I had for Maria is the love God wants us to have for him. I understand completely now. The gang stalkers are only here to report everything I'm doing back to her or her father and to provoke me to the point where I wind up in an asylum. It would be easier to just put a bullet in me, right? But then I'm reminded that they can't harm me as much as they would like to. Aliens are indeed fallen angels. They have been around for a long time and they are also in human form. I want to say also they are in the Oval Office, but I believe God is going to do something big this year or soon, and everyone has to choose a side whether they believe or not. This is part of my story. If you have any questions, feel free, brothers and sisters, to reach out. 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 It's been awesome having you visit for this horrible tale. Dusk is a time of transition. It's an owl's wake-up call. As the shadows grow longer and darkness takes over, the only thing to fear is fear itself. You can also catch Smoking Owl Tales on TikTok, Instagram, as well as podcasts, including Anchor, Spotify, and Apple. We have big plans for 2023. There are several mind-blowing collaboration stories in the works right now. If you feel the call, give a rip at the subscribe button and scratch at the comments. Stay longer now or catch you on another night very soon because the story goes on and on and on and on. And on. And on.